back. The Nova Brackets are live on my site. Well, the pre-workers live, so that way I can get them coming. Um, but I am actually designing or redesigning my little uh, ball joint spacer shim deal for my buddy Happy. Happy, I'm sure you guys have seen him. He's uh, always with Limpy. He's always out in the streets doing his thing. Uh, I've known him for quite a while now, probably four or five years. But he's got a G body, and he was asking about the spacers. I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna produce these. I think they're gonna have to be billet no matter what, because I don't really, I would never trust a 3D printed part with a spindle. But um, I'm going to print him some and send them to him, so that way he can know if that's really what he wants or not, and if. It's something that works on his car, and I think it's going to work on other cars, and I might have to source trying to get them made out of billet. I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to get them made yet, but that's something on my list. And also, the um, Caltrack guys, Leaf Spring Racers, everybody's been messaging me about the, uh, the old gap brackets that I used to sell. I'm going to design my own that are new and improved, and that don't take me like five hours to weld so I can actually make money instead of lose money on them. Uh, but those will be coming too. So stay, stay on the lookout for those. If you're a least spring person, these are going to be awesome. Uh, in other news, that's all I got for you right now. So stay tuned. Got my little things all diddlyed up right there, but ran out of filament last night and i'm completely out except i remember my mom for my birthday i had her get me this carbon filament it's 20 percent carbon fiber comes with a new nozzle and some other stuff but it takes a little bit more it's a little more involved in the printing deal so i've been watching some videos and i even read the handbook i know it's Unlike me, I read the handbook, and Alex, when she got me my printer, she bought me the whole shebang. It's like pre-calibrated, this whole kit. So it's even got this cord that I can update my printer with, a little tool to change the nozzle, and a glue stick, because apparently when you do stuff with carbon, it'll warp. So I've been watching all these videos and just trying to figure out what I need to do to not screw this up. So this will be my first time printing in carbon. I'm pretty excited about it because I, like I said, I've had this for a few months and I've been wanting to print with it, but I've just always been in a hurry doing the prototypes and the other stuff that I want to get done quick and I didn't want to mess anything up or screw it up. So uh, I also uh, talked to my buddy Kyle Kuhnhausen about it. He's like a 3D printing master. He'll probably tell you he's not, but he acts like he doesn't know anything because he tells me, oh, this is a... but he's a certified badass when it comes to designing and printing. He told me I need to get an enclosure, so I'm going to use my original Prusa box. Once I start printing, I'm going to throw the box over that because apparently there's some odors that come off of this and you want to keep it all warm. You know, you don't want to get in cold and wind hitting it and apparently that makes a difference so i'm gonna get the reading then i'm gonna get the printing all right let's see how this goes i'm gonna be able to fold this up once it starts printing so it's technically enclosed oh dang we still got still got nine degrees to go dang all right we in business we in business i think we are it should be printing do something oh Here. 
Stand by. All right, I got it. I had to put glue on the bed because it's a smooth bed. I guess you gotta put glue on there so it doesn't warp or something like that. I think I did a good job applying it. It looks like I was just a kid with a crown. Let's see how well it does. Do it, do something cool. Ooh. That's pretty cool. All right, I'll come back in a while and see if it's messed up or not. Welcome back. Let's see how the carbon print did. Looks decent. It does look to be a little stringy though in some places. I don't know. Let's get it off the bed and see. Looks like there's just some stringiness from it, uh, from it like just oozing. I don't know. I'm going to pull these off and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, that's pretty freaking nice. The strings are just not really anything, honestly. A little bit of the inner diameter, but that doesn't really matter. Pretty nifty. Man, look how much better those washers printed. Those printed a lot better. This just feels stronger. It doesn't feel soft. Yeah, I mean, the actual outside of the print itself did great. Look how nice that looks on the outside. Oh la la. Heck yeah. So a couple of things to cover about what I did when I printed these bad boys out of carbon. Um, that is color fab. Let me remember what it is. Color Fab XTCF20 carbon filament. Uh, it's sold on Bruce's website. And I did have to get the upgraded hardened steel nozzle to print this because you have to run it hotter. And Prusa, and the I run the Prusa slicer. Um, I think some people use other stuff, but it's really easy to um, you design something in Fusion, you click on it, hit make. And then you can select your 3D printer, which mine's pre-selected. I click it. It puts my design on basically what you can see, a virtual print bed. I can select my settings. The Prusa Slicer has almost every single kind of filament option you want, um, nozzles, all that. So I usually just buy my stuff from Prusa or buy Prusa brand stuff. So that way everything's already in the settings. And they already had this in there. All I had to do was select carbon and... I was going to just use the regular Prusa slicer settings, but there was a guy in the reviews for the, the CF20 stuff said he uh, upped the bed temperature and the nozzle temperature. And looking back, I, I, I followed his recommendations and looking back, I think that's why I got the stringiness because I think it was a little too hot. So I'm actually gonna go back to just the standard Prusa, uh, Prusa slicer settings and use that for now on because I did watch a video of a guy printing and he had some other slicer that he used. And for people, when I'm saying slicer, I had no idea what a slicer was. When I'm saying slicer, sorry, I got a wild hair right there. Um, it's basically what you do to set up your print settings. You can do it through Fusion, but it's a little harder. Um, I haven't quite mastered that yet. Um, it's super, super easy. They have different levels you can pick. Um, easy, advanced, and expert standard, standard um, levels. 
uh, to go through and select your print settings, angle, you know, select where you want it to print, rotate it, flip it, print it on its side, whatever you want to do. But it's super easy and this stuff turned out super nice. So for now on, I'm going to use this, the standard Prusa settings and because uh, they haven't failed me yet. But that, going back to that video that I watched, that guy used some other slicer and it wouldn't even hardly print this stuff. Like the bridging, and when I say bridging is when it went sideways, the stuff would just fall. Like it wasn't doing it right. He went to the standard, he used Prusa slicer instead of the other slicer and it printed perfect. So I should have just stuck, stuck with uh, the standard settings, but either way, they still printed great. They just had those few strings. Um, other than that, this stuff is freaking awesome. I don't know how much I'm gonna print with it because I think most of the stuff that I'm printing, I don't know if I'll actually produce stuff like this. Although I know like the, I guess that's a lie because now that I think about it, like the helmet hooks and the stuff like that that I wanna produce and sell, I'm gonna make out of this carbon stuff because it stands up to heat better. And Kyle Kuhnhausen messaged me and he said, hey, you know, I posted one of the, one of the helmet hooks that I, that I made and he goes, hey, the first, uh, the first 90 degree track that you have, that thing's going to be sitting on your floorboard because it'll melt and just fall apart. You have to do it out of carbon. So from now on, all the stuff that I'm going to sell will be printed out of carbon and it'll be this super nice matte black finish. So other than that, that's it for the carbon printing. And I'm going to move on to showing you the shocks on LeBron's. I have these parts shipped out to them. And now, uh, unexpectedly, I didn't think they'd be here this fast. These are the coilovers for the front of LeBron's over there. Um, these are legit the cheapest coilover option I could possibly find. It's the only reason I bought them. The cheapest option I could find in the length that I wanted. So I'm gonna see. I only bought single single adjustable. They're only adjustable on the rebound rates, but let's see what they look like. exactly like a QA1. <laughs> they must know the supplier. So these are the bad boys. They're I think just under 13 inches when they're compressed. And then let me see if I can extend it. Hold on. Yeah. And they're 19 inches extended. So pretty beefy boys. And then I've got some 200 pound springs. I want the lighter spring because obviously the Nova is lighter because it's a six cylinder and it's all stock. So I don't care if it smashes it. I want it to bounce up. Come on. I don't know when I'm going to put these on because I still have to wait for my brackets to get here from Bruner. So I'm just going to stare at these now. I'm actually going to go see how they fit because I'm very curious. Been on the road, I've been doing shows. Now we ain't steak. Remember sleeping on the floor. We're still at the gas station when the time's cold. In the kitchen, hostel trying to flip it out the stove. Rocking fake J's. I to uh, do the old freezer trick because these are a little tough going in there. I actually broke that one over there, but we're not going to talk about that because it doesn't matter. Either way, shocks are together. They're ready to go on. And I'm going to go test fit them. Well, you can see kind of what it looks like. I. I guess I pushed on it way too hard and broke the super glue and broke my bracket. But either way, it's perfect. Look at it. So all I got to do is get some brackets for this thing and cut, do some more trimming in there, cut the other side. And LeBron's has long travel. What do you think about them apples? That does look pretty dang spiffy in there, if you ask me. 
<laughs> so when I'm talking cheapest shocks, I mean, like, I did some research because LeBron's is as budget as it gets. I'm trying to print everything, um, you know, just budget everything I do on this car because I don't want to put money into LeBron's. A, I'm, I'm trying to trade it, and B, I just want to do everything like I normally do and try, <laughs> try to be as cheap as possible and get the most bang for my buck. So the three top, not top, but the three cheapest places I found to get an actual good uh, quality coil over was Summit, Speedway, and Jegs. Basically, Summit and Speedway both, well, Summit just sold the, Summit was the most expensive in the package I was looking for. Um, they just sold these shocks as a shock. You had to buy the shocks in the springs. So their kit ended up being 600 and something dollars or something like that. Um, Speedway, and these are QA1 shocks. Speedway takes the QA1 shocks, puts them together with a spring packaging combo, and they sell them for, I think, uh, I'll, have to, I'll put the, uh, the link in here in the picture. I think that was around 500-ish dollars, a little over 500, maybe just under 500, I don't know. But these at Jegs are the same exact shock basically I was going to buy. They're literally, re they look like private labeled QA1s. They were only 400 and I think 60 bucks. So cheapest shock and spring combo you could possibly find. These springs look exactly like relabeled QA1 springs. They even say made in USA. Um, so that's why I went with the Jegs because I knew Jegs delivers here. I knew these, this is the cheapest I was going to find and I wanted them sooner than later. And they actually said they had them in stock. So I got them ordered. Um, other than that, like, this is a pretty dang good deal for $500. Springs, coilovers, all that. And I'm not put, I'm not getting paid by Jegs to push this, and I'm not, I don't even have any affiliation with Jegs. I don't have any affiliation with anybody. Jegs, QA1, Speedway, Summit, anybody. I'm just trying to give you the real world feedback on what I'm trying to do and how you can do it on a budget. And that's where 3D printing comes into play and the design software comes into play. That design software, I think I pay $380 a year. I paid the year up front because it saves you like half the price. But if I was to pay somebody to design me something like what I did this past week with the brackets and the printer, you're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars when I've got, you know, I didn't pay for the printer, Alex bought it for me, but it's probably roughly just at or under $1,000. I've got four hundred dollars in pro on in the design software and a, a probably ten hours of watching YouTube, and now I can make stuff like this for myself. You know, you, the possibilities are endless with your imagination when you use it towards creating something that you need and creating a budget, searching parts. I spent an extra fifteen minutes searching parts that probably saved me one hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars and I got the same exact um, product. So I'm not telling you to be cheap. I'm just telling you to be smart about it, work through things, think through things, um, research, you know? This is, a, this is a very powerful tool. And I know everybody, everybody has what it takes to do anything. So that's it for my rant. That's it for my ramble. That's probably it for this video, but we covered carbon printing, and cheap coilovers for long travel. When I say I compared prices on the shocks, like I said, it might have taken me 15, 20 minutes, and this is what I came up with. Number three choice was Summit. It is, even with this rebate price, gives you less than $200 a shock, plus Summit Springs, you're at $505 before taxes and before shipping. Then you go here and you got the QA1s, same length. I, I did the, the research. These are the same length with springs, all that. You're 487 before shipping and before taxes. And then you go to JEGS and, and also the Speedway shocks, they have rubber eyelets. They don't have the spherical bearing. These have the spherical bearing, you know, the they come with the washers and all that for the shocks, same single adjustable, come with springs, everything, and we're at 453 before shipping 
And I want to say after shipping, taxes, all that, I was right at what these cost before shipping and before taxes. So if you're looking for a super cheap coilover setup, this, in my opinion, is the best bang for the buck because you get the spherical bearings, the springs, all that. And if you look, these are basically the same exact shock as a QA1. I mean, there's almost no difference. I mean, literally there is no difference. So, those are only single adjustable, but the Nova's not a race car and I want it to do wheelies, so. And it's adjustable on the rebound, so that's really what you want anyways. Um, but yeah, so quick tip and that's all I got for you.